Good morning and welcome to Saturday Morning Stories. This morning our story is about a boy named Ron. It's called Ron's Big Mission, written by Rose Blue and Corinne J. Maiden, illustrated by Don Tate, and it was published by, find the page, Dutton Children's Books. This book was published in, find the year there, it's really small, 2009. And this is a story of a real little boy. Although it's a fictional telling. So there's Ron. You're up early this morning, Ron. What's the rush? Asked Mrs. McNair. Come and have your breakfast. I made some oatmeal. I have to go, Mama, said Ron, tying his sneakers. I have something to do this morning. You always have something to do, said his mother with a smile. Just be home by lunchtime, okay? Ron was nine years old. That morning he left his house with a plan. He'd been thinking about it for a long time. It was a beautiful South Carolina summer day and Ron looked up at the blue, blue sky. Someday he thought he would be up there flying a plane. He wanted to be a pilot when he grew up. But today Ron had something else on his mind, something very important. Ron walked down the street as fast as he could. He didn't want to be late. Hi, Ron, the grocer called from the front of his store. There you are, just in time for a donut. Good morning, Mr. Douglas, said Ron. Thank you, but there's some place I've got to be. And Ron kept on walking. He passed up a donut. I don't know if I could do that. Down by the schoolyard, Ron saw his friend Carl shooting baskets. All right, you made it, called Carl. Hi, Carl, said Ron. Wish I could stay, but I've got something important to do. More important than basketball on a summer vacation, said Carl. Are you kidding? Ron laughed. He loved to play basketball, but not today. Today was too important. Ron kept on walking. When Ron got to the Lake City Public Library, he stopped. This was it. He was hot from walking so fast, and he was nervous too. He took a deep breath, lifted his head high, and went inside. Mrs. Scott was busy getting ready for all the people who would be using the library today. As the head librarian, she had to make sure that everything was neat and orderly. Mrs. Scott looked up to welcome her first visitor of the day. She smiled as Ron walked in. He was her best customer. Ron gave a little wave to Mrs. Scott and went right to the shelves. It took Ron a while to find some books. He always looked for books that showed children who looked like him, but that was hard. There were not many books about black kids on the shelves. At last, Ron found some books on airplanes. He took the books and started to walk to the front desk. Ron felt nervous and his hands felt a little sweaty, but he knew what he wanted to do. Mrs. Fielding, a white lady who was often in the library, stopped him. You can give me the books and I'll check them out for you, Ron, she said gently. No thanks, Mrs. Fielding, Ron said. I'm going to do it all by myself. 
But Ron, she started to say. Hmm. I wonder why a white person would want to check out books for the black boy. But he's on a mission. Let's find out what his mission is. Ron was already on his way to the front desk. He put the books on the counter. I'd like to check these out, please, said Ron. The desk clerk did not look at him. Didn't she hear me, Ron wondered. Ron knew what he had to do. Now this is a story that took place probably many years ago. He jumped up on the counter. He wanted the desk clerk to know he was serious. I'd like to check out these books, he said quietly. I did that a little loud. At first, the desk clerk and Mrs. Scott just looked at each other. You know you can't check out our books, Ron, said Mrs. Scott. You can read them here. That's the rule. Only white people can check out books from the library. Ron looked at Mrs. Scott and the desk clerk politely, but he would not budge. I always read them here. Today, I want to check them out, said Ron. Mrs. Scott and the desk clerk did not know what to do. Ron wouldn't get off the counter. People were staring. Finally, the desk clerk called the Lake City Police. Two policemen came right over. Let someone check out the books for you, son, said one of the policemen. You know the rules. But Ron just shook his head. He would not budge. Hmm. What do you think about that rule? about while we finish the book. A rule that said that someone who looked like Ron could not check out books from the library. Now Mrs. Scott called Ron's mother, Mrs. McNair. Mrs. McNair came to the library very quickly. I know how you feel, baby, she said, but you have to follow the rules. I can't, Mama, Ron told her. It's wrong. The rules are not fair. Why can't I check out books like everyone else? No one said anything. Not the desk clerk, not Mrs. Scott, not the policeman, not even Ron's mother. Mrs. Scott looked at Ron. She thought about all the times that Ron came into the library and all the time he sat at the tables for hours looking over so many books. He was her best customer and she knew what she had to do. Mrs. Scott walked back to her office and started writing. Ron wondered what she was doing. There she is. You can see Ron. What do you think she's writing? Let's find out. Mrs. Scott returned and handed Ron a library card. His library card. Ron looked at Mrs. Scott and smiled. As he jumped to the floor, he thought he saw her smile too. I'd like to check out these books, please, he said, handing the card to the desk clerk. The desk clerk took his library card and stacked the cards in the back of the books. These are due back in two weeks, she said. I like that smile on Ron's face. Ron smiled. Thank you, he said. He tucked his books under his arm and took his mother's hand. Together they walked home. Ron couldn't wait to get to his room. In this picture, he's showing it, pointing to the airplane in the sky. He's probably telling his mom is about his dream to fly planes. And he 
got to his room and he opened the book to page one. Author's note. So at the book, it's going to tell us a little bit about who Ron became. The boy who was Ron McNair grew into a man who flew planes just like he had dreamed he would do. He became an astronaut. And today, everyone in Lake City remembers him. They remember him every time they walk into the library. The red brick building on 234 Main Street and it's a special place. The walls in the children's room are painted with pictures that show children reading books under a huge oak tree. A space shuttle flies through the air. Inside the library, anyone can get a card and check out books. Young Ron McNair had a dream. And on that day in 1959, he made it start to come true. Because of him, many young people have a chance to dream. You can only be a winner if you're willing to walk over the edge, Astronaut McNair once told a group of children. Your eagles, spread your wings and fly to the sky. Many years ago in Lake City, South Carolina, young Ron McNair became a hero. Years later, in 1986, astronaut Ron McNair was once again a hero. Unfortunately, he lost his life when the space shuttle Challenger exploded on January 28th. With the loss of the entire crew, the Lake City Public Library is now dedicated to astronaut McNair. This story that we've just read is a fictionalized account of a real incident in Ron McNair's life. There are several versions of the story. This version comes from interviews with Ron's mother and Gloria Wilson, who was an administrative assistant to the director of the library systems in Florence County, South Carolina, and Gloria Tisdale of the Lake City School District. We thank them for their help in reconstructing this inspirational story. Except for Mrs. McNair and Ron, all of the character names in this book are fictional. So in 1959, when Ron was a little boy, black people couldn't get a library card at the public library. Now, do you think that's fair? I don't think it's fair either. But that law changed. Those rules changed. And now anyone can get a library card. If you don't have a library card, you can get a library card. At the Maplewood Public Library, we don't restrict according to age. Anyone can have a library card. Um, if you need one, you just need to email us at either maplewoodpubliclibrary at gmail.com or you can go to our website at maplewoodpubliclibrary.org and apply for a library card through our website. And then we will make sure that you can get a card that you can come by and pick up curbside and you can start checking out books from our library. And remember, everyone is welcome at the library. I hope to be able to see you there in person soon and you just have a great week and we will see you next time.